folks, Craig Lovati here with the Houston Museum of Natural Science. I am really honored and excited to show this off for you. I am standing in front of the new Hall of Ancient Egypt with my friend, consulting curator, Tom Hardwick. Hey, Craig. I am excited to show this off, but I know you are too. You've worked really hard on this. Let's get to it. So Tom, when you walk in, it's always sunrise inside the Hall of Ancient Egypt. Yes, this is the first feature of our new hall is a dynamic timeline giving you some sense of the 5,000 odd years of culture represented in the hall. It sort of gives you a frame of reference of exactly what you're about to see. Yeah. The hall itself, we don't display things chronologically, but uh, more thematically. So we'll have objects from all times of pharaonic history rubbing up against one another in a showcase to illustrate a particular theme. You'll notice we've improved the lighting here in the Hall of Ancient Egypt. A major reason is so that you can see the objects in the 92 cases here much more clearly. The rooms in the Hall of Ancient Egypt are arranged according to different themes. Here we are in the- Health and beauty. Because you got combs, you got razors, and I understand that uh, ancient Egyptians, especially rich ancient Egyptians, they shaved everything. Everything. Uh, doing so with stone or bronze razors, it doesn't bear too much thinking about, but that is in fact an important part of the hall. We're trying to make people aware of the texture of Egyptian life, not just the, the big statues, but also the scratchy, stubbly parts of life. Now, one of the first major pieces you'll see as you walk through the new hall of ancient Egypt is our friend, Ramses the Great, who you probably recognize from the exhibit next door, Ramses and the Gold of the Pharaohs. It's a wonderful piece, which really draws your attention down the vista as you walk through the pillared hall. We're very lucky to have it on loan from the Fondation Gandour pour l'art in, uh, in Switzerland, which has lent it to us on long-term loan. Now our lighting team here at HMNS has done a really good job of illustrating the passage of time on some of the temples that you would see in ancient Egypt, including Abu Simbel seen here. Uh, most of our visitors won't want or won't be able to travel 7,000 miles to Egypt to see the sites. So we've tried to bring the monuments as well as the objects to them. Abu Simbel is one of the great landmarks of Egypt for rock cut statues 66 feet high, carved into the cliffs by the Nile, moved as you might remember in the 1960s with the flooding of the Nile and reassembled along the shores of Lake Nasser. And this animation kind of gives you a sense of what it may originally have looked like with all four statues. And then as the sun moves across the sky, the, the statue, one of the statues collapses and the ancient pigments are washed away. So it's uh, 3,000 years of, of wear and tear crammed into a single animated day. One of the most popular objects inside the Hall of Ancient Egypt has always been the coffin of Nes Khans. As you'll see here, new vibrant lighting shows off very, very intricate colors in this coffin. We didn't see this before. Yes, this is one of the treasures of the collection. And as you say, finally, uh, all-round lighting allows you not just to see the paintings inside, but also those on the outside. When you think of Egyptian tombs, the lavishly decorated tombs in the Valley of the Kings come to mind. 200 years later, however, Egypt was a poorer country, and so people who in the past had a job that would have entitled them to a nicely decorated tomb had to concentrate their decoration on their coffins. So coffins from this period around, give or take, 1000 BC, are just saturated with images of the afterlife, protective gods, and so on. And the painting on the interior of Nescon's coffin is among the best. Now, adding to the allure of Nescon's, we've included a CT scan of his mummy. So now you can actually see what's under all that wrapping. 
Now we're taking a load off in here inside one of the two experiential rooms that you've included in the new Hall of Ancient Egypt. This one is an evocation of the tomb of Nefertari. Yes, Nefertari is one of the wives of Ramesses the Great, and her tomb in the Valley of the Queens has some of the finest uh, carving and painting to survive from ancient Egypt. Um, this display takes elements from the tomb. They've been, by a process I can't begin to fathom, projected and carved onto fiberboard, and then colleagues in Root Labs, a uh, Houston-based company we've done a lot of work with, have painted them in what are pretty close to the original colours of the tomb. So uh, again, for people who cannot, who can't or won't visit Egypt, and indeed can't afford the hundred dollars to get into the tomb of Nefertari, this is giving people a certain sense of what it's like. Now, if there's been one constant in human life, it's that, well, we love gold. We're obsessed with gold. That's why we're in this room, which is an evocation of one of the shrines of King Tutankhamun. Yes, Tutankhamun was buried in, let me count them, something like 10 layers of physical and magical protection, for, uh, keeping his mummy from tomb robbers and a bad afterlife. And the very outer layer, when Howard Carter entered the burial chamber of his tomb in 1923, were four gilded wood shrines nested inside one another like Russian dolls. And this room, which by happy coincidence is kind of about the same size as the burial chamber, is decorated with panels inspired by the more photogenic parts of these four shrines. For the Egyptians, they did really think you could take it with you. And that's one explanation for the astonishing quantity of stuff that still remains in tombs for archaeologists to find. Here, however, we've got only one object, a gold mask, uh, certainly not solid gold, it's very thin gold leaf from around a thousand years after the burial of Tutankhamun, which is fighting for attention among the contemporary bling here in this room. Contemporary bling? Well, 3,000 years that's ago, perfect. it was contemporary bling then. There we so, go. There we are. All right, guys, that's just a taste of the new hall of ancient Egypt here at the Houston Museum of Natural Science. We're not going to show everything. You have to come see it for yourself. Remember, folks, get a ticket to see Ramses the Great and the Gold of the Pharaohs, and stop on by the new hall of ancient Egypt.